Hello and uh, welcome to this presentation about the QGIS Web Client 2. My name is Sandro Mani. I work as a software engineer at SourcePole in Zurich. And in this presentation, I'd like to give a quick uh, overview what's or how QGIS Web Client works and what's new since the past year or so. Um, quick word about SourcePole. Uh, we are uh, mainly just spatial or GIS-based uh, company. We develop uh, QGIS. We are for you know, C++ core developers. We have a product called QGIS Enterprise where we provide the maintenance and support for QGIS. We have a QGIS-based application called Cadas Alberia, which has, let's say, a simplified user and interface for special applications. And uh, on the WebGIS side, uh, we have the QGIS Web Client 2, which I'm going to talk about today, and QGIS Cloud, which is a uh, spatial data infrastructure based also on QGIS Web Client 2. So outline, I'm going to give an introduction to QWC2, the QGIS Web Client, to uh, QWC services, and then uh, give uh, an overview of what's happened in the past year in the project. So the QGIS Web Client 2 is, let's say, the official web application for publishing QGIS projects on the web. It's hosted in the uh, QGIS namespace on GitHub. The first public release was in 2016, and the goal was to develop an application with a modern and responsive UI. We focus on usability, uh, and uh, at the core, a plugin architecture which makes it easily extensible uh, with uh, additional features and using state-of-the-art technologies like React.js and Open Layer 6. This is how it looks. Uh, this is a pretty recent uh, screenshot from our demo page. So we see it's uh, that's an application which is scalable from desktop to mobile devices. Uh, it provides obviously a map uh, viewer, a layer tree, and a menu with tools, a search bar, and uh, let's say many additional functionalities uh, which I'm going to list uh, afterwards. How it works is basically the idea is that you can style your project in uh, QGIS uh, using the layers and style, let's say, the layer configuration and styling capabilities of QGIS, and also create some print templates. Once uh, you've created this project, you can deploy it on QGIS server, which will then act as the WMS server to, uh, let's say, serve the image to the web client. So uh, the QGIS web client uh, is a client tailored on QGIS server. It uses some uh, extensions offered by QGIS server, for instance, for PDF printing, and let's say, yeah, communicates solely with the uh, QGIS uh, server as a simple, or let's say, in its basic form. And the uh, core features it supports uh, is a team switcher. Uh, we call them themes in the QGIS desktop world. They're called projects. Basically, you can have multiple QGIS projects published as themes in the QGIS web client. Layer tree, which reflects the configuration uh, you um, define in the QGIS project. Feature info, which works uh, via WMS feature, get feature info to publish uh, context feature information on a click point. You can define uh, search providers uh, let's say, through various means, uh, connecting or interfacing to uh, whatever search provider you may need. Uh, there are measurement tools, point, uh, line, and polygon. There are sketching tools, redlining, where you can draw additional objects on the map. There's a permalink sharing, where you can copy the link, which encapsulates the state of the viewer, and then share the view or that link to another user. Geolocation to display the current position. PDF printing through the get print capabilities of QG server. And a map compare tool, which allows you to compare, let's say, to map, or let's say the top layer with the rest of the map through a slider. It allows you to import external layers uh, through, uh, over WMS, WFS, and WMTS, also uh, local KML files, and provides a J JavaScript API uh, to allow, let's say, uh, uh, external applications to interface with uh, QWC. Um, QWC per se is or can be used as a standalone viewer, uh, a simple, say, static uh, application, JavaScript, HTML, CSS uh, deployed on a web server. Uh, relying solely on QGIS server uh, for its functionality, 
but it can also be extended uh, uh, to provide additional functionalities, and that is where QWC services come into play. QWC services is a broad ecosystem of microservices uh, for extending uh, the QWC viewer. Uh, microservice is basically uh, one small service encapsulating one specific functionality, and then the communication between these services is over a well-defined uh, REST uh, protocol, and that allows to, say, keep uh, the application well organized with uh, single functionalities divided in single services. In our case, uh, or say in the current case, it's mostly Python Flask services. And uh, to make them easily deployable, uh, we have uh, offered or say built these as Docker images, and uh, these are available uh, on Docker Hub. And there's a website at QWC Docker where you have, let's say, a kickoff um, configuration to get you easily started, which provides a, let's say, a readily configured uh, starting configuration to run the application. If you don't want to use Docker, you can also um, do the configuration by hand using Apache and the mod VSGI, for instance, or any other technology uh, you might uh, prefer. The architecture is uh, that uh, from the browser, uh, all requests go through an API gateway, which route uh, the request depending on the path to the uh, different services of the whole ecosystem or of the whole yeah, application. The core is uh, here we have the QG server, which uh, communicates with the map viewer through an OGC service. This OGC service, as we'll see later, is to enforce permissions uh, from authenticated users. There is an authentication service which um, allows users to log in uh, with, let's say, different uh, authentication backends. And uh, then there's a collection of REST services which provide additional functionality. And finally, there's an administration uh, interface uh, to manage users' permissions and resources. Uh, the functionalities which are made available by extending uh, the QGIS web client with QWC services or, as mentioned, users and resources management, uh, authentication. There's a possibility to have a full text search engine. Uh, there's editing possibilities so to edit uh, layers directly on the client. Compact permalinks and user bookmarks uh, to allow storing uh, the state in a database. High profile uh, for the measurement tool. If you draw a line, you can also see the high profile under the line. Custom feature info templates. This is a functional functionality to extend uh, get feature info to render into customized, uh, let's say, HTML templates for how it is presented in the viewer. A reporting service based on, Jav on Jasper and uh, the map info pop-up, which is basically a right click on the map, which will give you additional context uh, information. Uh, the core services, let's say, in a nutshell, what you need to run a QWC services instance is the OGC service is a proxy between the QG server and the web client, which will enforce permissions, for instance, uh, uh, permitted layers or permitted attributes. There's the map viewer, which uh, serves the actual static uh, QWC application while uh, adjusting the configuration based on the permissions uh, which apply to the authenticated user. There's administration uh, GUI, which is the backend for managing these permissions and resources. And there's a config generator, which will read uh, the entire, or say the QGIS projects, which are configured as teams, will combine them with the permissions config configured in the administration GUI, and will uh, generate uh, static JSON files, which the services need to operate. And the big advantage of this config generation is that uh, there is one moment where this, let's say, expensive task happens, and then the result is stored cached for the services to use. Authentication is an interesting topic. Um, there's, a, let's say, the whole authentication mechanism is modular. Uh, the let's say, requirement of an authentication service is that they issue JVT tokens and then the actual implementation of the authentication service, respectively, how they authenticate can vary depending on, uh, say, the requirements. We provide the uh, database authentication service, which will authenticate uh, uh, 
against users stored in a database. There's uh, LDAP Active Directory authentication and also other possibilities like Kerberos and the SAML. Additional services, the data service uh, is the, let's say, main backend for the editing functionality that allows read-write access to uh, geodata stored in a PostGIS database. There's the permalink service for storing the compact uh, permalinks. Uh, there's a full text search service which will offer you face a full text search with Apache Solar and the map info service for uh, the right click context uh, information. Um, one quick side about Docker, uh, and the big advantage is uh, you have one service per container, so you can easily update one or the other component by simply changing the tag version in the Docker uh, configuration file. You have the containers or the, say, the services executed in a controlled environment, so you don't need to worry about having the right Python version, stuff like that. That's already taken care of. You can easily create and manage them, and uh, this, they are distributed over centralized registry at Docker Hub. And Kubernetes is then an additional, uh, let's say, level of complexity, complexity to automatically manage the deployment and scaling of uh, these uh, container applications. Now, the, let's say, the news part, uh, what's been going on in the past year, uh, let's say it's been a Pretty interesting year, a lot of new things have come in, which I'm pretty excited about. The first thing is the snapping functionality. This allows you, while editing, drawing, or measuring, to snap against other data sets, uh, or say layers in the QGIS project, or also local uh, drawings drawn by redlining in the, in the web client. It works uh, by building up a cache of features over get feature info for the current extent of the map, and uh, then it allows you to have no delay interactive snapping against uh, all geometries visible in the map for the configured snap layers. There's a new plugin called the Time Manager. This uh, is basically um, a connection to the um, WMST time dimension, which you can con uh, configure in the QGIS layer properties on the QGIS server. There's a slider allowing you to uh, define the time you want to have illustrated in the map, and then it will use those time dimensions over QGIS uh, server to um, pick out only the features visible at that time. And the additional feature is you have got these uh, small, let's say, bars underneath the features. These illustrate uh, the time frame within uh, the feature uh, is visible. Attribute table is also a new plugin uh, similar to the attribute table in QGIS. It allows you to view or have a tabular view of the entire uh, data set, all the records. It allows you to edit, add, and remove records. And maybe also interesting, it also allows you to manage geometry-less uh, features directly from the web client with no geometrical reference. Plus, it has a zoom and filtering uh, capabilities uh, to filter and yeah, zoom to the data set of interest. A uh, small new feature, maybe also interesting, is uh, basic support for editing Z uh, geometries. If the geometry has a non-zero uh, Z component, then the uh, geometry will be marked as read-only. You can only edit attributes, otherwise you can also edit the geometry and the Z component will always be set to zero. Um, Again, let's say in the editing uh, topic, uh, one, let's say it's not really, no, sorry. So, sorry, quick last, okay. Um, what is, it's not really new here, but it's been around for maybe two years and it's been improved in the last year, is that um, the attribute uh, form configuration in QGIS, in the layer properties, will be translated to a form in QWC for editing functionalities. This allows you to, uh, let's say, comfortably uh, create a form in QGIS and then have it uh, replicated in the QGIS web client. I repeat this here because it's kind of important for what follows now. Um, the first, uh, let's say, new feature based on this is the feature form. It's basically a merger of an identify and an editing tool. It allows you to, um, let's say, query the map at a certain position, and instead of going over feature info, it goes over the data service, presenting you 
uh, the attribute form as configured. And it will also um, then allow you to add it to data directly in the data set. So you could use this instead of the standard uh, get feature info uh, or the standard identify tool of QWC. Um, maybe also interesting, uh, we have integrated an image editor in the file upload functionality so you can upload the file and directly edit uh, the picture within the web application and then store the result through the uh, data service. Uh, regarding one-to-end -end relations, we have implemented sorting. So I don't know, if maybe some of you are familiar. When you define a manual uh, QGIS or QT designer form, you can, through a special naming convention of the widgets, you can define the role of the widget. If you define sort field at the back, then you will get the arrows in the one-to-end -end relation um, section of the form, which allows you to order them. Uh, nested forms is kind of say a bit complicated. Uh, the idea is that if you have a one-to-end relation with a very complex uh, re related uh, item, instead of trying to squeeze every, f every editable field inside the small space, you can link an, an additional form into the edit uh, form and then have that open as a child pop-up. Uh, Preprocessor hooks is something interesting for mainly for, let's say, de plugin developers. It allows you to hook into um, the loading of the form on the QGIS web client side and do specific alterations on the form before it is displayed for uh, the actual editing task. Uh, one, let's say, specific uh, fun or two specific functionalities is external fields. Sometimes it is useful to compute uh, a value depending on another value client side, for instance, uh, the city where a point is located, but you don't have that information in the database, so you'd like to compute it based on an external service. And the other one is uh, it allows you to add buttons with custom triggers in the form so that when you press the button, you can bind a custom action which may will fill out the form in a specific way based on the value of a certain attribute. Um, an additional new thing is localization of forms. Um, this is implemented by simply translating the form via the Qt Linguist uh, system, and QWC will now look for a translation file and load uh, this translation, or let's say translate the form via this translation file and present your translated form. Inline images uh, is a small addition just to uh, present static images inside the form. If you prefix uh, the uh, widget in the Qt um, designer form with image and then field name. It will just add the field value contains uh, an URL. Uh, it will display this uh, um, image address as an image. Their catalog uh, is to offer a predefined set of external layers to users so administrator can configure the sources uh, he or she wishes to offer to its users and then it will displayed as a browsable tree in the uh, web client. Um, also on editing, there's a possibility to clone an existing geometry. For instance, if you have a map with buildings and you'd like to select one building for maybe a revision task, you want to maybe clone that geometry, so you can just pick on the map to uh, clone that geometry and then use that geometry for the new feature you're creating. And uh, I think the last one uh, is bookmarks. So similar to permalinks, bookmarks um, are just like uh, the application state stored in the database, but uh, bookmarks are stored per user. So um, it's basically the user that manages how many bookmarks he or she wishes. Some references, uh, the homepage for let's say, the entire application ecosystem is qwcservices.qtub.io. The two main repositories are the QWC demo application and the QWC services uh, Docker um, repository. And we have got various uh, existing instances where you can try it out. The QWC sourceball.ch is the, say, our demo application, which more or less uh, represents the current state of the application. QGIS Cloud is using uh, QWC services um, as its viewer, so it's also an interesting reference. And then there are existing deployments uh, around from uh, Glarus and uh, Solothurn in Switzerland. So uh, that's about it. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions.